Welcome to lesson 15. This one is about coordinators and compounds. Uh, before, we've seen that uh, one way English combines phrases is by embedding or placing one phrase inside another. We've already seen that includers embed one sentence within another. For example, Grammar describes how words are put together following rules. So let's see here. Does grammar describe? Grammar does not describe. Grammar is the subject. Describes ties with grammar. Describes ties with the present. The M place, the Y. It's a verb phrase with time. This is the S form. And when I rewrite it, I have describes how words are put together following rules. And when I look at that Y, I find the verb, the particle place, the object, and the complement place. And the object, how words are put together following rules, is a nominal included sentence. How is the includer? words are put together following rules is the sentence. So, for example, includers put sentences inside other sentences, maybe as objects. Does everyone follow these rules? Subject. The shifter. When they use language, everyone follows these rules. So here we have an adverbial included sentence. The rules that we use facilitate our communication. Do the rules that we use facilitate our communication? And when we take a look at the subject, let me just rewrite that. The rules that we use, <clears throat> we see the subject is a noun phrase, a determiner, the, and that we use is an adjectival included sentence. Here's three different examples of how sentences can be included inside other sentences. Here in the object place, here is a shifter, and here as a modifier inside a noun phrase. Now, we've also seen when we started talking about other kinds of modifiers that other phrases can be embedded as modifiers in noun phrases. For example, the brick house. So the brick house is a noun phrase. House is the head. The is a determiner. And brick is a noun phrase. One noun phrase embedded inside another. The small house. The head is a noun phrase. Again, we have a determiner. And now, we have an adjective phrase embedded inside a noun phrase. The house on the corner. Noun phrase house. The is the determiner. Modifier on the corner. We have a prepositional phrase embedded inside a noun phrase. The house containing mice. The house, noun phrase head, determiner, 
containing mice is an adjective is a modifier and it's a verb phrase no time ing form and one more example the house broken into last night is a noun phrase determiner noun phrase head broken into last night is a modifier verb phrase no time so we can see that we could have a noun phrase embedded in a noun phrase an adjective phrase embedded in an adjective phrase a noun phrase uh, prepositional phrase embedded in a noun phrase verb phrase no time verb phrase no time embedded inside a noun phrase and at embedding is actually a very common kind of way to combine phrases in English. So now, another very common way, and this is the first way that, for example, children learn how to combine phrases, is through compounding. Compounding is a second way to combine phrases in English. A coordinator combines two or more of the same phrases in the same place. So lesson 15 introduces these six coordinators, and, or, but, yet, so, and for. Now when you embed a phrase, you're embedding one phrase inside another. They don't have to be the same kinds of phrases, and they don't necessarily have to be in the same place. But with compounding, you use a coordinator to put two or more of the same phrases in the same place. And let me show you what I mean. Dogs and cats make excellent pets. Do dogs and cats make excellent pets? Dogs and cats do not make excellent pets. So we find our two X word places and then our subject. And the ties, present, why is a verb phrase with time. This is the no s form. And when we take a look at the subject, and let me rewrite that, dogs and cats, what we find is we find compound noun phrases. We can mark the coordinator with a plus, and we see that here we have dogs, that's one noun phrase, combined in a compound with a second noun phrase, and these noun phrases were found in the subject place. Let's take a look at another one. Dogs are loud, are dogs loud? Yes, they are. But cats are quiet. Are cats quiet? Yes, they are. We have two yes or no questions. We have two sentences. And we put them, we combine them with the coordinator but. So our first example we had compound noun phrases. Our second example, we have compound trunks or sentences. Let's take a look at another one. My dog has a black and red leash. Does my dog have a black and red leash? My dog does not have a black and red leash. My dog is the subject, no shifters. Has ties with my dog. Has ties with the present. It's the S form. The Y is a verb phrase with time. Let's rewrite the Y. Has 
a black and red leash verb article object complement place is empty now the object is a noun phrase let's rewrite it a black and red leash we have the noun head leash a is a determiner and black and red is a modifier adjective phrases but actually we have two adjective phrases black and red so we have a compound adjective phrases we take a walk in the morning or in the evening every day let's use a different color every day we take a walk in the morning or in the evening. In the morning or in the evening, we take a walk every day. So let's skip the, uh, the predicate, or I'm sorry, the uh, trunk, the subject and the predicate. Let's forget about this last shifter every day. And this is what I want to take a look at. The other shifter. In the morning or In the evening here's our coordinator or we have compound prepositional phrases in the shifter place and this is what we're saying when you use a coordinator to make a compound you're putting two or more of the same kinds of phrases together in the same place so we can see compound prepositional phrases in the shifter place. Compound adjectival adjective phrases in a noun phrase. Two sentences, compound trunks or compound noun phrases, dogs and cats, in the subject place. Two or more of the same phrases put together in the same place. Let's see if we have some more examples. Marty reads, writes, and speaks two languages. Does Marty read, write, and speak two languages? Marty does not read, write, and speak two languages. Marty is the subject, predicate. Now the M place is empty, and we have the Y. Reads ties with Marty in the present. Writes ties with Marty in the present. And speaks ties with Marty and the present. We have compound S forms of the verb. And what we have then is we have compound verb phrases with time in the Y place. Of course, compounds can be analyzed down to the individual word level too. And I'll show you how we can do that with the next sentence. Lupe 
bought chocolate chip cookies and sourdough bread yesterday. First, shifter. Let's find our two X word places. Did Lupe buy? Lupe did not buy. Lupe is the subject. And the predicate is everything to the N shifter place. The M place is empty. And Y is bought chocolate chip cookies and sourdough bread. Bought ties with the past. This is the past form. And that makes Y a verb phrase with time. Let's rewrite our verb phrase with time. Bought chocolate chip cookies and sour dough bread. The verb is bought. Particle place is empty. What did she buy? Chocolate chip cookies and sourdough bread. That's our object. The complement place is empty. And when I take a look, I notice that we have a coordinator and. Let me take a look on the right side. Some sourdough bread. Now that is a noun phrase. It means that I must be combining noun phrases. So I take a look over here and it's true. I have chocolate chip cookies on the other side, on the left side of the coordinator. So I have the object is compound noun phrases. And how we can break this down is by taking one at a time. Chocolate chip cookies. Let's look at that one first. Cookies is the noun phrase head. They're not chocolate cookies. They're chocolate chip cookies. So chocolate chip works together is one modifier, and that's a noun phrase. Let's rewrite it, because we're going to try to explain and analyze down to the word level. Chip is now a new noun phrase head, and chocolate is another noun phrase that modifies the chip. Let's do sourdough bread next. Okay, a good thing I noticed that we're almost running out of room. Okay. Sourdough bread. And bread is the head, noun phrase. It's not sour bread, it's sourdough bread. That means that this is a noun phrase modifying the bread. Let's rewrite sourdough. And dough is a new noun phrase head. Sour is the modifier, and sour is an adjective phrase. And this is how we're going to be analyzing our sentences. The same way that we've done before, the only thing new really is now, when we find a coordinator, we need to always take a look and see what exactly are we combining. The easiest way to do it is to take a look. If here's the coordinator, first, let's take a look and see what's on the right side. It needs to equal what's on the left side. They have to be the same. And we'll find them in the same places. This is our introduction to compounds and coordinators. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to uh, practice this when we do the classwork for Lesson 15.